Good morning. What Buenos a, dias. <laughs> what a beautiful morning to be here worshiping to the Lord. Yeah, happy Sunday, and uh, we welcome also those who are worshiping with us online today. We're glad that you are with us. Today is also going to be a very uh, historic day for us here at Emmanuel because in our 1015 service today, we're going to be using for the first time, we have headset devices. The whole service is going to be in English, but those who do not speak English will be able to hear uh, it in, uh, through the headphones in Spanish. And so uh, we're having a bilingual service at 1015, but it's all being done in English. But those who don't speak English will be able to hear uh, it being translated to them in Spanish uh, through the headsets. And so we got those headsets as part of a grant. Uh, and that was very helpful uh, to us as we continue to grow in our Hispanic ministry here in, uh, at Emmanuel. So with all of that, we want to uh, just take a minute to... Uh, Reach around uh, those who you are worshiping by and greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. Blessed Jesus at your word 904.
We begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O oh Lord, keep a record of sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgive you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Give here, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth, unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the death of Sheol. O God, insolent men have risen up against me, and man, a ruthless men seek my life. And they do not see you before them. But you, O oh Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, so rule and govern our hearts, minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your final judgment, we may be served up with the holiness of living here, and deal with your imperfect joy forever. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. is recorded for us by the prophet Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, beginning at the first verse. Behold, my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading for this morning is recorded for us in Paul's letter to the Romans, the sixth chapter beginning at the first verse. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For for if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel is written in the third chapter of St. Matthew, beginning at the 13th verse. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to the rest on him. And behold, a voice from the heavens said, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. 
This is the gospel of our Lord. Now we say together the Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto each and every one of you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And the portion of scripture upon which our message this morning is based comes to us from our gospel lesson which was shared just a few minutes ago. I heard this story about an old Baptist preacher who preached on baptism by immersion every week. Every week it was always the same topic, baptism by immersion. And even though that is a belief of the Baptist church, the people in the congregation had grown weary and they were tired of hearing a sermon every week on baptism by immersion. And so the elders of the church got together and they decided to resolve the situation through diplomatic means. They complimented their pastor, first of all, on his pulpit skills. And they suggested to him that he was such a, a natural preacher that they wanted to try an experiment. They wanted to be able to just hand their old preacher a slip of paper before he got into the pulpit with an unknown Bible verse on it. They said, Pastor, we believe that you are such a gifted speaker that you can preach a great sermon on any Bible verse in the Bible without any advanced preparation. Well, the preacher could hardly resist that challenge, and so the elders got busy searching the scriptures to find something that was totally unrelated to baptism by immersion. First of all, interestingly, we have to remember that that word baptize in the Bible, it simply means to apply water. Immersion, baptism by immersion is one way to be baptized, but it's not the only way. There are other ways in which we can be baptized. I just wanted to, uh, to share that. And so the elders got together and they selected, his gen they selected Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. They liked that verse because there is nothing in that verse that is related to baptism 
whatsoever. And so the Sunday following, the preacher was getting ready to step into the pulpit. An elder handed him a piece of paper with Genesis 1-1 printed on it. And so the preacher stood in the pulpit. He looked out over his congregation. He actually read it three times as he was mulling over in his head what he was going to say for his sermon. He finally composed himself and he said, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And if I remember right, the earth is one-fourth land and three-fourths water. And water brings me to my topic of today, baptism by immersion. <laughs> Truthfully, though, the, the power and the promises of baptism are not found in how we apply the water in baptism. The, the promises and power of baptism are in the word of God, which is connected to baptism, which is attached to baptism. Well, this morning, I'm going to spare you. I'm not going to preach on baptism by immersion. But I do, however, want us to focus on our baptism. And I want us to celebrate our baptism. You know, Martin Luther once said that before we get up in the morning, before we put our feet on the floor, we should make the sign of the cross and recall our baptism. And why? Because it's in our baptism that we become a child of God. In our baptism, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the forgiveness of our sins, and the promise of the Holy Spirit. This past week here at Emmanuel was Vacation Bible School Week. And the theme this year was make a splash with Jesus. Make a splash with Jesus. And Jesus certainly had an affinity for water. I mean, after all, he created it, right? Before his incarnation, he created it. In Genesis, we read that day one of creation, before the earth was formed, the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters. Day two, we read, God said, let there be an expanse between the water to separate water from water and so on. Years later, God's hand was at work again when he parted the Red Sea so that Moses and the children of Israel could safely escape slavery in Egypt and escape a pharaoh. And when they were out in the wilderness, they didn't have any water. And God miraculously provided water for them as he uh, threw a rock. During Jesus' earthly ministry... He ministered to a Samaritan woman at a well. Much of Jesus' earthly ministry was in and around the Sea of Galilee. His first disciples were fishermen who fished. They made their living on the Sea of Galilee. And it was on the Sea of Galilee that Jesus miraculously stilled a fierce storm. The disciples said, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? Jesus even miraculously walked on water. His first miracle was changing water into wine, but his ministry, his earthly ministry, began with his baptism in the waters of the Jordan River. Our gospel reading this morning was also the very first Bible lesson this past week for the children in Vacation Bible School as they learned about the baptism of Jesus as he was baptized by John the Baptist. Of course, Jesus was just one of many people from all walks of life who were making their way out to the wilderness to hear John, to hear John's message. John's ministry was to prepare the way for the coming of the promised Messiah. His message was simple but it was direct. He said, repent. Repent. In other words, turn away from your sinful life. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And so Jesus, too, had left his home in Nazareth to travel where John was baptizing in the Jordan River in order that he, too, could be baptized by John. And yet Jesus was different Jesus was different from all the other people that were going out to John who were listening and responding to his message of repentance. You see, Jesus wasn't baptized because he was responding 
to John's message of repentance, nor did he come to be baptized because he needed baptism. Jesus is the perfect sinless son of God. He never committed any sin in thought, word, or deed. He had nothing, zero, zippo to repent of. And yet he wanted to be baptized. And why? Why was Jesus baptized? Well, it's often been said that Jesus' baptism was like his ordination into his public ministry, so to speak. With his baptism, Jesus would now begin his mission and ministry as the promised Savior of the world. Now, Matthew tells us in our gospel reading for this morning that at least initially, John the Baptist hesitated to baptize Jesus. But Jesus explained it was to fulfill all righteousness. And so then Jesus stepped into the water and John baptized him. And at that moment, the appearance of all three persons of our triune God were present. Our Heavenly Father spoke from heaven. The Holy Spirit descended down on him in the form of a dove. And of course, Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, was there in the water receiving. And God the Father declared from heaven, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. You see, being a son granted privileges and imposed purpose. Jesus, as God's son, would be bound by sonship to do his father's will. And in this particular case, it was to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, to restore a sinful world back to a right relationship with God, to restore back the relationship that God initially had with his creation before sin came into the world through Adam and Eve. So even though Jesus did not need to be baptized, yet by beginning his earthly ministry this way, he was identifying himself with us, his oneness with all people. It was just three years after Jesus' baptism that he went to the cross. And it was there at the cross he took upon himself your sins and my sins. Yes, the sins of the whole world. He took upon himself the punishment for those sins so that we might have forgiveness. And isn't that a good thing? Isn't that a good thing? It's easier for us to always identify with someone who has experience the same things that we have and do experience in life. The writer to the Hebrews went even further than that. He said, Jesus was tempted in every way that we are and yet did not sin. You see, there's a common bond with someone who just knows how we feel and what we feel. So when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, he identified with us. And when we are baptized, we identify ourselves with Jesus. Listen again to these beautiful words penned by St. Paul to the Christians in Rome. Paul said, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. You see, something wonderful happens to us when we are baptized. And for us Lutherans, it means a whole lot more than just a sign or a symbol. Because baptism isn't something that we do for God. Baptism is something God does for us. And he gives us the gifts of salvation. He adopts us into his family and we become a son and daughter of Christ. In our baptism, God bestows on us the, the forgiveness of those sins which he paid for through his own suffering, death, and resurrection. 
He gives us the power over death and Satan and then that glorious promise of eternal life. So when we are baptized, our lives are changed. We see things differently than before. We see other people differently than before because our baptism enables and empowers us to do the things that Jesus wants us to do as we give ourselves in faith to him without reservation and to love one another as he has loved us. And so this morning we're just taking the time to thank Jesus for identifying with us in his baptism and for making us his own in our own baptism and for those precious gifts of salvation which he gives us in baptism. And so we pray that the Lord would always help us to remember all that he has done for us and for our salvation so that we can share him with others, share him with others and his love. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all our understanding keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus, amen. Let us rise and sing our offertory.
Let us pray. Almighty and never living God, we are reminded of the treasure we have in the message of the good news of the gospel. As we celebrate baptism today, thank you, Lord, for our gift of salvation, which we receive in baptism through faith in you as our Lord and Savior. And Jesus, you are also our great physician. And so this morning we come before you, we want to pray for all our friends and members who we are, first of all, privately naming in our own hearts before you. Today we especially want to pray your healing hand upon Jan Brockmeyer as she recovers from surgery, and Becky Johnson, who is hospitalized at Tampa General, also Richard Seedroff and Bob Hinkle, also for successful cancer treatment for Dan McSpadden, healing for Ann Smith and strength and comfort for the Carol Joyner family as she is now in hospice care. We also pray, Lord, for safe travels for Richard and Judy Steinbrook and uh, reduced back pain for Richard as they travel. Lord, we want to thank you for a wonderful week of Vacation Bible School. Thank you for all our volunteers, our teachers, and our staff. Thank you for their energy. Thank you, Lord, for the eight children who were baptized on Friday and their families. We thank you for all the children that are going to join us for worship later on this morning. We want to lift up to you again our senior pastor calling committee. We pray your guidance and blessings upon their work as we seek a new candidate to extend a call. Continue to prosper the work of all of our missionaries, both here and abroad, and keep safe all our military men and women, and help each of us, Lord, to share your love and forgiveness with those in our own circle of acquaintances. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us rise and pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Our service continues with the celebration of the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my true body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this also in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Enjoyed having this time of worship with you this morning. As we close out our service, let us speak together our vision statement as a reminder of why we exist as a church. Through word and sacrament ministry, we share the love, joy, and peace of Jesus Christ among ourselves and with those around us. Our worship has ended. Our service now begins. Let us go in peace and... <laughs>